if everybody were absolutely free, then obviously some people would achieve more than other people. Some people would end up knowing more than other people or experiencing more than other people. Some people are more talented in one area than other, another person would be. Yet they can't be absolutely equal if they're going to be absolutely free. On the other hand, if you're going to make them absolutely equal, if you're going to make sure nobody rises above this level or falls below this level, you're going to limit their freedom. They won't, have, they won't be actually free. So if you're, if you're equal, you can't be free. If you're free, you can't be equal. That had been the common sense of Western political thinking from Aristotle on. So when Thomas Jefferson says, we hold these things to be self-evident, which of course means I'm not going to talk about them. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to offer you any proofs. I'm not offering you any demonstrations. I'm just going to say it, and you'll buy it. That we hold these things to be self-evident, that you can be both free and equal, in effect, that's an incredible intellectual fastball he just sneaked past us. Everybody since Aristotle would have thought he was wrong on that. How do you hold together freedom and equality? Well, it seems to be that the way in which you do it, the relative equality that Ken was talking about, that it is relative. It's never absolute. And I think that's perhaps the thing that we have to notice. Freedom is not an absolute. Neither is equality an absolute. Neither is the pursuit of happiness an absolute. Those are all possibilities that remain open to us for realization. We will realize them in different ways and to different degrees, depending on our interests, our abilities, our talents. But we're never going to be able to be absolutely free and, absolutely, and achieve absolute equality in any society, big or small. You just can't do it. And we shouldn't do it, because to absolutize any such quality is to, in a sense, say that freedom is, the, is our experience of God. It's not. Freedom is a great experience of what it is to be fully human, but it's not an experience of God. The experience of God is, first and foremost, least strongly understood as pure and perfect self-gift, as pure and perfect agape. It's that that is the measure of our experience of God. It's there that we come to grips with the way in which God shapes our lives and the way in which we experience God. And it's that which is the foundation, and it's, it's rooted in community. It's something that uh, only can happen to us when we are in communion with one another. That's why, of course, the, the closing gift of Jesus to his disciples is communion. It's, it's, it's being brought together and sharing him and his life by sh as we share this meal. And in that sharing, we experience the presence of God. 